So um, we're going to talk today about kind of making your own little presentation piece. Um, giving yourself some props, yourself some, a space to be fabulous in. So what I'm hoping is that people have their own views and the things they'd like to talk about as well. I'm going to show you some of my things, some of my ideas, some of my stuff. Um, and people are more than welcome to uh, chime in, to tell me, ask any question you've, you've got, uh, to tell me all the cool stuff that you've done or you found or you, or you like. I'm thrilled to hear that. Um, my name is Praxel Atarna. I am in the Kingdom of Artemisia. That I personally live in the southern part of Artemisia, which is in Utah. I am in mountain time, so for me it is about five o'clock in the evening. Uh, let's see, I've been in the SCA since 1991. I've been playing these significantly and seriously about the last 12 years. I have a Venetian courtesan persona. I started out with a Russian persona, and um, I love all that is the material culture of Venice. And so I absolutely had to shift because there were too many beautiful, fun things to play with. And that's what we're going to kind of talk about, what those fun things to play with are. Um, and again, lots of options, lots of things. These first couple of slides are a class I teach on two wall hangs, where we go through and at, at wall paintings and uh, wall cloths that were done in in period um, some of these are reproductions but what I love about them is is that they are painted in a lot of cases they were painted on on cloths that hung and that happens to work out absolutely fabulously for those of us that you know go to an event and live in tents because it is already there. If you are interested in the Tudor wall class, I did record that class and it is available on the Kingdom of Artemisia uh, YouTube channel. But I'm um, just, we're gonna go a couple. So here's another fabulous mermaid style bit from an extant wall. We have more of that here. Again, I'm showing you these just so that you can kind of see the huge variety of decoration and the fact that people in period, at least in the period that I study in the 16th century in England, in Italy, um, are, are covering every surface they can possibly cover with color. Um, this piece right here is from a 16th century pattern book. There was this is my nerdiness. This is where I what I love to talk about. So I'm gonna mention that um, 16th century pattern books. There were about 150 pattern books published for use of different artisans. Everything from wall painters to embroiderers, um, and such. Tons of ideas for for patterns, and they are. There's bunches of them extant, available. You can just go pick a couple of patterns you like, um, make a copy, post them up, put them, put them on something. Um, there was also a huge preponderance of people in the 16th century using prints to cover their walls. Um, maps were popular, uh, just any number of decorative bits and pieces. And a lot of these books are available on archive. Um, the Met has a huge collection of them, as does the uh, National Library of France. If you are interested in that thing in particular, you can either PM me, uh, you can message me, or I have a Facebook page and a website called Modelbook, M-O-D-E-L-B-U-C-H dot com, or it's Modelbook Muse on Facebook and lots and lots and lots of pattern. There are things for garden design and glaciers to use on, on, um, on walls, I mean, on, on, on glass. Lots and lots of options. Um, if you don't want to design your own, they printed them. Like I said, there was about 150 of these books printed, so, and pages and pages of design inspiration. And they're great for things like painting your walls, painting cloths to hang 
on your wall or put on a, as a floor cloth. Um, it was a very popular thing that was done in the 16th century. It was not really intended as a replacement for a tapestry, but it was used in the same sort of way. So it, so they were weaving tapestries, but they were also just putting paint on their walls. And they happened to work fabulously in, um, in tents. Another piece, um, it's actually a tapestry design. What I love about it is, is we see kind of this look. We see these, these lovers walking in this garden and we have the trellis, little bits of trellis here. And a lot of this stuff is really easy to take when you're camping, trellis especially, just put it around the thing, add some, add some uh, silk plants if you choose, lightweight trellis. You can also purchase many, many fountains to put in place. Um, when I first started looking at a courtesan persona, there were a group of about, I have to say five or six, absolutely astonishing, amazing courtesans um, in our Asia who did just fantastic, um, fantastic design, fantastic uh, pageantry. They had um, gorgeous chairs and carpets were set up and they had their, their um, awnings and they set up their tables with plates with gorgeous spreads of food sorts of things really do make a huge difference in how we interact with others. And um, just a couple of things here and there can make a gigantic difference. And in a lot of cases, it just involves a little bit of paint and some time. And here's another one of those where we see, again, these lovely little walls. And those are really easy to do with like some canvas full of stakes and you, and you draw some lines and paint them you get the same sort of a look where you can divide your area. So, and here's about my last little bit of um, historical stuff. This is from a house in England where they've had them repainted, but it's based on a piece that was originally there. Again, these fantastically decorated walls um, this is when I was just starting to get going with things at an Astrea. Um, a lot of, a lot of fur going on here because it was cold. <laughs> but just a few little, you know, a couple of pieces of furniture, some soft furnishings can, can make a total difference and make your very non-period tent into something that you can at least, you know, show off a little bit. This is one of my first pieces that I made as a, I want to have something cool to, uh, to highlight myself. Um, it is a fake fur coverlet. I use it as my camping blanket. It is outstandingly warm. I, it, it looks, it looks fun. It looks like it's something, but it's, it's paint and applique and, and fake fur and a little bit of velvet and a lot of tassels and it's incredibly functional. It wasn't too expensive. It didn't cost me a lot of time either. I use my, um, my hair has since changed a little bit. This is a very pig. I now have a stripey flying pig because that's what passed, but the standard thing where you you make a decision, you use your heraldry before it's passed, and that's not what passes. But I still use, I still use the color anyway. I've had it now, I think, about six years. And I have camped in, in cold and rain and snow and mud. And this thing, while it looks, uh, it looks like it's something nice, uh, it's actually held up really well, totally washable. Um, the, the tassels are free, but other than that, it's been great. I highly recommend those sort of, those sorts of projects. And like I said, this is just some felt applique down with some paint. Um, when you're making decisions, on making your own little jewel box, choose a theme, choose a color scheme. Um, I'm a herald. 
So I went with the easy, easy idea and just decided to use my heraldry because I figured if I was using the colors of my heraldry, so everything I was buying and using was using the, um, the or and azure, was using the, the gold and the blue. If I bought things in that color scheme, they automatically went together. So I, I think that's one thing that will, will save you some money down the road. Just pick some sort of overarching thing. Um, I have friends who do things like elephants are their gig. So that everything they got some sort of elephant thing to it. Um, using your persona is obviously a great go. Using your, your heraldry and your livery colors, also awesome. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. You can pick uh, you know, anything you want as long as, I mean, you, you certainly don't have to, but I, I think it helps make things go together eventually a little easier. So everything I have tends to be in blues and golds with the highlight white silver. Um, this is a cloth, this is something I just finished. Um, it's a cloth of honor, which I thought was a fabulous idea when I found out about them. Um, before we had things like, uh, before there were big uh, balance, before they had the large hanging, uh, stuff behind thrones. They had what was called cloth of honor. So it's a cloth, it's a big, just a big old cloth that you put behind somebody that, that is important that day. Uh, and I was like, well, is this for their majesties only? Nope. There's some great examples in like Bruegel where you, you see a peasant girl out in the middle of a park, out in the middle of a, of a, um, outdoor area with a cloth behind her because that d day she's the important one. So anybody that wants to use one absolutely can. You can do all kinds of crazy things with it. Uh, mine happens to be silk patchwork and then all the seams are um, couched over in gold. So it shines and it sparkles and when I sit in front of it I feel kind of kind of regal, kind of kind of cool. Um, it normally we just, I just submitted it for Kingdom Arts and Sciences. Um, we did ours virtually, so all of our stuff had to go somewhere, and so that when I can show it to the judges through Zoom, kind of weird. But so my, uh, my cloth of honor is still on walkabout. It will hopefully come home eventually when I make connection and manage to get it home. Because, but normally it sits right behind me. It has been the best Zoom background ever. So um, this is another one of those kind of wacky ideas, but I found it to be super fun for me. So um, 16th century for tournament culture, having a parade shield was a thing um, and they were not necessarily, and in fact, most cases were not a actual shield that you would use to, um, to defend yourself. They were more often than not something like paper mache or, or wood. And they were as part of the pageantry, as part of the, part of the parade. So I decided I wanted one. Uh, I made mine out of paper mache because again, paper and leather mache were things that were, were used. Um, this one was made, Jesus, in nine years, which is crazy, but it's been that long. Um, and this paper mache with a, uh, a little impresa or a temporary uh, temporary motto and theme. In this case, the temporary thing is it is a cornucopia and it says Magis Esmelius or more is better. And I just painted it on up and um, it it's lightweight. It can hang, um, it hangs really nicely like uh, out underneath the can, you know, when I and tables underneath it. I could have this over in a corner and it helps set the mood and it helps let people know and let them, let them know that, you know, it's just fun. More things that I've used my heraldry on. Um, this was actually, this one here was actually a gift. Um, 
I have a flying pig as my arrow tree. It happens to be this one here with the, uh, with the stripes. Uh, and so people have been great enough to, when they've done trade, when I've done theme trades and barters and stuff, I often get pig, which I find outstandingly amazing. And like I said, again, just going for that idea, you know, keeping things in a particular color scheme. So this little stitching kit, awesome, because I can use it whenever I go anywhere. And again, it adds as a prop to what I'm doing. Um, this is a little side table that I painted up. It causes a little bit of paint, adding that extra oomph, adding that little bit of extra sona and tying everything together. And again, you're having to look at lots of pigs and sea blats because those are my images. A um, couple of parasols. Countess Fiona did this fantastic silk doll. I just, I just got it and I'm blown away and adore it. Um, I made the, the one there, which is just Candace one. Painted. Um, again, that one's about old. And I used it all over the place, just again, because having one more thing in colors brought everyone together, highlighted my persona, made me look like I had planned things, which is a cool thing. <laughs> if, if, if you acquire a few props, it looks like you know what you're doing, even if you don't, because, well, obviously, they coordinate, and they only coordinate because everything I get happens to be in those colors and with my history. Fiskir from um, Renaktin, which is a fabulous place. I can't, can't uh, say enough about them. I've had this set for six years. The cup broke, so I just ordered new ones. These just came a couple of uh, weeks ago. But you can also do things like going and getting um, some plates from your local, from your local store, getting some um, um, bake on ceramic paint and paint up your heraldry or paint up a pattern or even just getting uh, your plates and cups and bowls in a solid color that is part of your livery, again, makes a huge difference. Um, banners, these have currently been laying behind me lately because I, I'm sitting here for court. I'm one of our local Royal Heralds. So again, I have to show up on camera and then I made it real easy by throwing up some flags. Um, these are from Sir O. So all I had to do was say, hey, I want these. And um, they, are, they are printed on nylon. And so will not fray, will not bleed. You can even paint them. There's lots of different people uh, that will do that for you or you, you can do it yourself. Um, another, hey, I have a theme. My coronet was done by Champagne Fair. Um, it is also done with my, with my badge. And a friend embroidered this lovely veil for me. Again, my, my badge. And the nice thing again is I don't have to clean it um, because everything I have goes cheat. The best, the best way to do it accomplish most things is, is cheat and not have to think about it too hard. Um, another options are you can have being printed by companies like uh, Collage, Spoonflower, and other places that will, will uh, zazzle, uh, red bubble that will do things for you. I found that having something on a tote bag it's kind of cool. I had this one here done up on a um, on a uh, a blanket, and it is absolutely, totally, wonderfully fabulous for throwing over things like coolers um, or that pile of stuff that I haven't gotten in my tent yet, or whatever it is that I don't want showing right then. Um, and I didn't have to make it. I just looked for coupons and had somebody else print for me. 
So I have a couple of those, um, and they can act as they can act as a floor cloth. They can act as a rug. They can they spend a lot of their time covering tables so I can shove things underneath it or uh, covering coolers. They're great for that sort of thing. Um, this is a really, I did not make this, but it was made for me. A really uh, fun seat that somebody made for me out of an old, uh, I think it was an old ammo box actually. And it, it put some, uh, put some hint on it, put a couple of boards through it, put a couple of legs on it, painted my heraldry up on it. And I have this super cool, awesome, awesome chair. And again, it's got, it's got my heraldry painted on it. And this can also be used as a gaming board if I choose. Alrighty. Do you, have, do you have plans for the chair? Because that looks completely awesome. Um, I don't, can ask, I can ask James about it and see if I can, see if I can find out about how he made it. Because I, I did not make it. I wanted it at an auction for almost nothing, but it was a local auction. They were doing um, just earning money for their, whatever their local project was. Yeah, and I didn't even think about it when I bid on it because it was so low and I didn't think I'd get it, but I ended up with it and it's awesome. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it looks great. And I love the idea of something that can be flat, like completely flat and it can have a back. That that's just yeah. like blowing my mind. <laughs> yeah. And there's lots of great chairs out there. Sorry, I didn't realize that my head headset was not plugged in completely. So I, I apologize for that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there are certainly some great people and merchants producing fabulous chairs and things like that. But I like that one because it was, it's not trans real transportable uh, for like taking down to the battlefield or whatever, but it is absolutely fabulous for hanging out at camp and knowing that my my chair is going nowhere. <laughs> but he just made it out of, out of a, an old hinged box and just added a couple of slats across to make the seat and a couple of short legs. So. Um, does anybody else have things that that they think because i'm always on the lookout for more things i can throw my heraldry on and, and add to add to what i'm doing so anyone else got any suggestions or any questions they've got that they want to talk about do you do anything special for lighting for lighting um i don't tend to do much because i am <sighs> i'm an old person who likes to go to sleep early but um i do have a couple of lanterns um and some of the the solar lights that we have we kind of around the edges of of stuff um i also have a couple of the the little um they're ama they're amazing they're little solar lanterns that kind of get a flickery thing on with the led and those have become pretty available and those are fun because they look because they look like an actual lantern but they, lighting definitely adds, and it's something that I want to look into, but I haven't done much with it yet. Yeah, I have a couple of those solar torches that flicker that I put outside my front door. Which is awesome. They, they add a lot. And they, they last all night, pretty much. It was pretty amazing. Making sure that you can find your way to the, to the porta potty and people are not going to trip over your front door and or identify you as someone else. Yeah. I don't I don't go out late to parties, but being able to get to the porta potty and back is good. Yeah. Forget the porta potty. A chamber pot is your friend. I have a friend who uses one and, and totally recommends it because she doesn't want to get out of bed, especially when it's cold. The no, no, we're doing this. We'll take care of it in the morning. But I am not tromping out when it's um, one of our later events. Our harvest war. We tend to get snow quite frequently. So, yeah, it's the no, no. I can't leave my tent. I just got warm. 
I've yeah. just barely gotten to the point where I'm 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 starting to have things in my tent that are not purely functional. Like I got a little hangy hook thing and I have my basic like cot and everything, but I'm like, it could be prettier in here. Yeah. Oh, that sounds awesome with the five gallon bucket with snap on toilet seat. Is that, is that like a camp, going go to the camping store and look for it sort of a thing? Because that sounds cool. Isn't <laughs> everything comes from? And some people throw some kitty litter in it. I haven't tried it myself, but help absorb it and maybe kill the odor um, a little. I, I have been told that kitty litter is not a good thing to do if you're going to put it in the porta potty because the oh, yes putting it in the porta potty would be terrible yeah because the kid or or and also you can't put it in the regular trash because you know it's biohazard biohazard yeah so that the the best thing to do if you're worried about absorption is to just put a handful of toilet paper in there and you're good to go but i personally have never had an issue with um w with anything um i got a little two-handled stock pot from the grocery store with um w that has um a lid on there and i've never had a problem I did think of one thing I have in my tent that is sort of like purely just something that makes me feel really nice and it looks really nice. Um, someone made me like a giant chair, someone that I did a Ren Faire with, and it's like way too giant of a chair to actually use a chair. It's very tall. So mm -hmm. I actually put like a basin on the seat and I put, oh, a wow, awesome. I put a mirror on the back of it and I use it as a vanity. And then I have a little pitcher that I can set there so I can put water with a little bit of rose water or mint water in there for in the morning to like kind of just like douse myself with to smell pretty and like I can do my hair. I position it so it's pointed at the front of my tent. My tent is very dark um, so that it, I have like um, a nice view, I, like I have nice light for myself and that's really nice. It makes me feel really nice to be able to like get dressed. Have your little dressing table. Yes, and I've actually been thinking I could do some really pretty like decorative designs on it because it is the first thing you see when you come into my tent is the back of the vanity. Yeah, paint's kind of awesome. I actually have, um, mine is a foldable, Ikea had them in their kit, like their kids stuff um, a few years back and it op it op it's like a big, big three, you know, three-sided folder. And it has like, you know, a fakey mirror, but it's totally work. It's a totally workable mirror. It just, it won't break. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of fabric covered. And I use that because I, I, it packs soup. I should have brought it over. Um, it, it packs flat. I don't have to worry about it breaking, but yeah, I found it. I found it in like the, the dress up pretend play section of Ikea. That's awesome. Yeah. Mine is, since mine is constructed like fair furniture, it also breaks apart and packs flat and is painted in my heraldry colors. Yeah. No, I mean on I seriously I can't say enough about it. I know I know people are like eh. picking two colors, making one of them a metal and one of them a color works for so much. It really does cuz then you don't have to coordinate. It's automatically doing it for you. It's sort of the capsule wardrobe of interior design. <laughs> And plus, um, whenever you anybody's looking for something to get you for a present or whatever, they know what colors to pick. Yeah, and, and it doesn't have to have your whole, you know, your whole badge or anything else on it. Just, if you just keep a consistent, I'm going to use these colors, you don't have to coordinate anything. Because, again, I'm lazy. Uh, but I don't, I don't want to think about it. And, you know, blue and, blue and yellow may not have... I happen to like them, but I don't think that when I first picked my heraldry, they were what I wanted everything I own to be in. But as I've added layers to stuff, I'm perfectly content. Uh, I, I like them and they're fun. So, um, yeah, or, um, 
So I, I, I have two personas. One is Roman and one is um, Crusade era, but she's in Constantinople. So I feel like a whole Eastern exoticism thing would work. And honestly, oh, yeah. that's how I decorate my normal house. So that means I can steal more things from my house. <laughs> um, hey, layers, layers of pretty textures. I mean, sarongs. Yes. And I can't say it. I mean, well, I am a fabric hoarder in the first place. But yeah. just layers of soft textiles, really, they add a lot. I mean, you can, and again, like I said, with my with the, my blanket that I use to drape over things, just being able to to cover what we don't want to see, yeah, it makes a huge difference. You know, I'm just gonna throw that over there. It'll be don't notice the thing, um, and <laughs> and having a few of those covers, and they don't need to be fitted. I mean, it's great if they if they were, and this is the cover that goes on this thing, but it it really doesn't. And I I do like the I've seen a lot of really great ideas with like with the layering of the rugs and all of the go gorgeous flowy textiles. And in those cases, they're not matching colors; they're putting color and color and color and color and color. And for so many personas, that is exactly what you're looking for. Yeah, um, and you so can again, just that works great too and like shower curtains like go to your thrift store and just whenever you find something grab it and add it to your pile your stash there's a really cool class um i just watched um i think it's on the the penzik the the penzik playlist that was on um historical textiles with using digital stuff for historical textiles and they were talking about how they had done some stuff and had it printed on shower curtains and then they became waterproof walls for tents and that sort of floored me. I was just like, that's the greatest idea ever. Yeah, yeah that's that was, amazing. That was in Penzik University. Yeah, well worth a watch. Just some really great ideas there for, for using um, imagery, for using historical imagery with a modern twist. So you're not, I mean, don't get me wrong. I am the crazy person who, who did make the 100% uh, pieced silk silk patchwork cloth but i am also all about click click please ship me this thing uh that so class had so there's lots of options out there ideas uh, well I'm, i went, I went go to ahead. class war of the wings about the printing on fabric and the entire it was middle eastern the entire tent everything in there had been done that way all the fabric all the furniture um, and, and a lot of it had been extant, um, prints that had been recreated to be printed onto fabric or printed onto whatever she needed to print it onto. Um, and then a, an aside, we bought three blue shower curtains that have a, a kind of medieval print on them to divide our tent in half. And they were just cheap, cheap shower curtains and they look really good. Yeah, those... This is, I mean, we used, we've done a lot of indoor stuff with various baronies, um, and I, I got into the blocking thing before it was, it was everybody's into the block printing thing, and so I ended up doing a lot of block, block printing for a lot of people, um, and I did a lot of just plain sheets, just gigantic sheets that we could hang off the sides of pups or whatever, um, and with easy patterns, um, and those, I can't believe the number of people who have been excited about that. I was like, it's just a couple of sheets. They look like sheets. Uh, but they didn't to people. And they were also great for taking to events and, again, throwing it over whatever you didn't want to, be, want to see or blocking out what you didn't want to see. So those large pieces of fabrics, whether you design it yourself, block print it, buy it, lots, lots of uses for them. And they really make a bigger difference than a lot of us think, just not having to see whatever it is that you didn't want to see. All right, any other discussions or suggestions other than you guys should totally go look at that on the play, on the Pensic playlist? It's like uh, sort of digital something for historical textile. Totally worth watching, absolutely, and fabulous ideas. And it's relatively um, short. It's not an hour long. It is relatively short because it's more ideas than how to do it. And I, I, I've watched it twice now. Totally worth it. 
Yeah, she designed those textiles based on historic stuff and then sent yep. it off to sent it off to Spoonflower. She's pretty amazing. Yeah, I said I, I have several things that I've done like the, the blankets to collage which didn't involve me doing a huge amount of digital work because I can't do a huge amount of it because I is techno dumb but uh, but it's they're really user friendly even for those of us that are in that position they make it easy for you to do. Did you have a question? Go ahead. Um, I, I wanted to throw out that uh, for those of us that are on a budget, thrift stores are your friends. Um, because Absolutely. You, you know, lots and lots of like blank, you know, white sheets that you can dye any color you want or you can paint to turn into big wall hangings. Um, I've even found, you know, uh, fox soles and things that I've rescued from the thrift store, you know, so you can find, you know, even fake fur to, to use as trim and all kinds of different colored fabrics and, you know, good enough to... Yeah, I am, I'm a thrift store, I'm a thrift junkie. I haven't been into, into one since March and it's killing me. Conveniently, I have a garage full of, of previous treasures that I guess now is the opportunity to get to use instead of continuing adding as shopping is is my actual hobby not making things i don't think you're alone there i don't think you're alone yeah thrifted leather is awesome i just did a tutorial we're doing um largest august over at the university of artemisia on artemisia's youtube channel and we just did uh little uh, coin purses out of out of a out of a jacket or whatever and i i have a pile of thrifted leather goods yep they're great that way and you can put them together there's also a fabulous examples of italian leather cover leather covered walls in period and i've got to figure out how to make that work and what to to make to do with that because it's gonna it's gotta percolate and marinate in my brain for a while but eventually i'm gonna do something with it You know, the ceilings in three rooms in the Alhambra are covered with leather that has been painted and gilded. Yeah, there's there's a, there's several rooms um, in in various Italian villas that are completely done in in that. I'm I'm kind of thinking it might be fun to do something along with um, like there's a paper bag floor uh, print fl floor tutorial for covering your you know your your empty floor with using paper bag to give it kind of a, that look and I, I'm just trying to figure out what to put it on so I'm sure there's something I can put it on that would add to my thing I am a huge proponent of take paint add add to thing suddenly thing is much cooler so um, also decoupage decoupage is also fabulous especially for those of us that don't do in, intense uh, detailed painting uh, Again, I think it was one of those that I saw when, as I was going through various playlists, probably on the Pensick one, where they were, she was doing boxes where she had, rather than doing the, the paint, the painting of the, whatever it was, she decoupaged it. So I want to do more of that because I think it would be, it would be fun to really add to some of the stuff where I, like my little table that I painted my piggy on it. Um, I think it would be a heck of a lot easier to just, uh, decoupage some sort of manuscript drollery or something. Yeah. Um, also, um, if you're looking for possible sources of motifs and art and things that you can print out and decoupage, um, the Rijksmuseum in the Netherlands is working on digitizing their entire museum and everything that they have digitized is in the public domain. Yeah, there's several that have done that recently. So if you want to, and in fact, on, on that particular museum website, you can actually like set up an account and just download stuff to your account on the museum's website. 
and then you can you know resize it we they have they even have tools where you can like resize it repurpose it yeah if you want to take like the corner of a painting and do it on something you can yeah the getty just did that with a bunch of stuff the stuff is all available for um under creative commons so a lot of them have shifted to that making it super easy for you to get in get in there and, and use them um, I live at the Met because of uh, the model books, which happen to be my major interest. They have, they have bunches of them, and so I do a lot of things with with those particular prints because it happens to work with my research interest and my persona and my time period, and they all come together. And so I just copy one or two and put it on something, and know that the motif I'm using I didn't have to design, and it was intended. To for an artisan to use, so I love those. I also have some, um, I'm still experimenting with how to paint them to make them look the most realistic, but um, I have some 3D printed, like small cosmetic boxes, because um, that's my main rabbit hole, is making uh, historical cosmetics. Um, and they come in usually these tiny little elaborately carved ivory boxes that obviously no one nowadays can ever afford. So my idea the was... plastic doesn't look too bad when you 3D print it. Print it doesn't look no, too off ivory if you... Yeah, and ivory has those veins in it, so it has a similar sort of texture. So I'm still working on perfecting like how to paint them and stuff to make them look really nice. But... Um, yeah, it's, that's definitely promising. And I've seen some really nice stuff done with 3D printing. It's a lot about how you sand it and handle it and treat it after than what you can print, because you can print almost anything. And some museums, right. I think, also have 3D printing, like, scans of artifacts. Yeah, I know, the, I know the Lewis Chessman and various other things and which museum that, that is at, they are flat out available already. They're over on the, the Thingiverse, and all you have to do is they're already set up for you to, they've done a complete 3D scan so you can, you can print it as is. So lots of fun stuff coming out of museums. Although many of them had to take, have had to take breaks for obvious reasons, but there's still so much out there to play with. So much out there to play with. One thing I was going to say earlier, and I, I totally just remembered, um, about um, cheating and using like modern things to sort of like make it easy on yourself. If historical people were alive now, they wouldn't not use the plastic. They would be so stoked on it because they'd be like, it's, what? <laughs> it's water, what is waterproof? I just, I really have, they worked very hard to, to use what technology they had to the peak level that they could. I can't imagine that they'd be like, no, 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 we refuse technology if they suddenly popped up nowadays. I, I love using cellular clay. Um, because again, a lot of the stuff that I'm looking at, like the tournament shield I did, uh, are done out of paper. We're done out of paper mache, or like there's a fabulous set of um, they're like little bosses that were part of a ceiling at Hampton Hall. Let I me mean, just Hampton Court Palace, and they were done out of leather mache. Um, and there's like things like they were like brick dust and and bits of ground up leather and glue, and so. Um, I do a lot of, I will make this from cellular, cellular clay because I can just go purchase it, shape it to what I want to, paint it up, uh, throw on some polyurethane and I have whatever. And that was the, a lot of what it was. I mean, we have these, these, gra these outstanding, cool molded bits that were not carved. They weren't, they were, they were made in, in molds for a quick thing to, to look good from a distance. And then you add some gilding and it's awesome. So, <laughs> last year, so I think that's last year on sale at the container store. I bought some baskets that are made to look kind of like knit. So up close, clearly they're plastic, but from a distance they look really good and they're perfect to put food in up on my nice. shelves. Yeah, and that's one of those things. Once you start, I'm going to decorate. You start looking at things, and you can see five things it's going to be. I do that when I go to the thrift store too. Five things that that could be, and then. Unfortunately, it sits in my garage until I get to it. I'll get to it eventually. eventually gotta, I will make something cool. You got to pick one of those five things, and then you'll have chosen forever. Again, this is why I stick to my heraldry and my heraldic colors because it cuts down on the on the things I have to think about. 
it's it's the easiest way for me to coordinate anything. Otherwise, I get stuck in the plan. I I cannot. All right. You. I I actually genuinely in my real life have a palette of five colors that I wear for my clothes. So I, it's a good idea. <laughs> Alrighty, folks. Um, that's all I've got. If anyone else wants to continue chatting, we can, or um, you can get on with your evening. Thanks so much for coming, and I really appreciate it. And Thank the thanks for you know sitting here looking at my pictures of pigs. Thank you for all of your all of your time teaching today. All these classes have been absolutely fantastic, and uh, I just it's been awesome modding for you and getting to know you. Thanks. All right. Thanks, folks. Um, you have a lovely evening. It was great to see you all. And I appreciate you showing up. Thank you.